Welcome to the Troy Kearns Podcast. We talk all things real estate, business, and entrepreneurship. Today, I've got a very special good friend of mine, becoming a very good friend of mine, a super smart, young entrepreneur, businessman, business magnate in the future. He's 23 years old. He hails from my home state of Washington, Tacoma, Washington, a gymnast and a dynamic dude, Cody Davis. Welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. It's good to see you again. Good to see you, man. You're out here in Vegas. You spoke at our mastermind. You told me this is the first time you spoke. You didn't you sound like a complete natural. You weren't nervous at all. It was my first time with Christian, my business partner. We've never done a duo, never done the whole back and forth live. So that was a that was an event. So tell me a little bit about your story. Yeah, so I got started. I was 19 years old and a, a recent college dropout. Dropped yes. out of college. I got my real estate license because some person on the internet never met him before told me to. Good and reason. Yeah, you know, I was a <laughs> rational teenager. But I dropped out. I got my license and was told I was going to make a bunch of money. Fast forward nine months. I had sold two deals and I had bought one. And the deal I bought was a zero down seller finance 12 plex. A couple of years into the business, I was up to 30 apartments. I met my business partner, Christian. And over the last year and a half, we scaled to 100 and well, by the time this goes live, 122 apartments, all seller financed and a resort. That's crazy. And so the first question I would have for you is prior to getting into real estate, what were you doing? Like you just had gotten out of high school. Tell me about like growing up in Tacoma and what that looked like. Yeah. So I was super athletic. I, did, I was a wrestler, track and field guy. I was a diver, so I did uh, diving through high school, not in the ocean, but off the board. Okay. I was a, a gymnast, and I played soccer for 11 years. So lots of sports, really active, also super introverted. Right. I, I didn't have a lot of friends outside of my core groups, which were in the jazz band, because I played lead trumpet for eight years. Wow. And uh, outside of sports, didn't really talk to many people during school, so I just did my thing. I practiced parkour during lunches and uh, trumpet for the rest of high school. So you were, where did all this drive come from? Like you're doing, I mean, most people when they're in high school, they're not doing, you said soccer, diving, gymnastics. I missed one. Uh, track and field. Track and field. Yeah, there, there was a, a bunch sports. of them. And, right. and I've seen you put some tumbling on Instagram and you're like good. Thank you. You're not like some guy who says, yeah, I did the, the bars or what, the, the rings. The rings, yeah. Yeah, I mean, like you are a full athletic beast. Where did that come from? I had a really good soccer coach when I was a kid. His name, he was Coach Mike, and he, he used to be in the military. Okay. But him and then his buddy Joe, they were just good. And whenever I messed up or made a mistake, they were firm. They weren't mean, but they were very firm. And not making mistakes in the form of like on the field, but just as a like building my character. Right. So I'd attribute most of it to to my coach Mike, but uh, that that's probably where that came from, and that was around the time I was probably twelve. Okay. Yeah. But did your parents put you into athletics? When I was a kid, so I was nine and a half. My grandma got me into parkour. There was a program at the local YMCA over in Tacoma, Morgan family. Okay. And so I did that um, till I was. 15, 16, and then I started coaching. Okay. So I was volunteering from 15 to 16 and finally was able to coach because I was old enough. Right. So you were drawn to the sports. You were drawn to competing. You were, do you have like a chip on your shoulder a little bit? I don't know. <laughs> I just, I like to compete. That, okay. That, that, so, there's only one person I don't compete with and that's my business partner, Christian, but I like to, to play the game. Right. You, you, you do enjoy that. So you you got into the sports you got into playing what instruments did you play i played trumpet trumpet which is not an easy i i faked my first band lesson i played the saxophone my mom oh, there like, you go she's like you did so well i was like yeah i didn't i was just faking so <laughs> it's true i was i was faking and uh not a proud moment i just didn't have the she wanted me to play sax i didn't want to play sax and so you took it very seriously um, what do you, what were your plans to do after high school? Originally, it was kinesiology. I wanted to be a physical therapist, so I was interested in getting into PT. When I was a wrestler in eighth grade, my one of my good friends at the time slammed me on the mat, and I got this thing called torticollis. So basically, I uh, got slammed. The, the tendons in my back or ligaments, whatever they're called, basically 
got crunched together. And so I looked like this and I couldn't move my arm very well. So I went to PT for years and my thought was someone helped me so I could go and I lost all back flexibility, but I could go out and help someone else do the same thing if and recover from a huge injury. And so got through that and the thought was, I'm gonna go to school, learned it was gonna be seven years if I took off summers. Right. And then I didn't really wanna do that. So I went <laughs> from the idea of I got accepted, tons of scholarships to, right. to UPS, right. to going to Tacoma Community College. Right. And I went for business. Yeah, so total switch. You're glad you probably made it. Of course, yeah. Yeah, and I'm sure you can help a lot more people through your business and entrepreneurship than you could by fixing somebody with your own hands. Absolutely. So I wanted to interrupt you in this podcast and just take a quick moment to tell you two things. Number one, we do this for free for you. I haven't made a nickel on social media at all. I'm doing this to provide you enough value, so all I'm asking for you to do is share it and give us a five-star review. It'll totally help us out, and I really appreciate it. The other thing, if you want more free resources, like our free Facebook group, it's Millionaire Mentorship Real Estate Investing on Facebook. All you gotta do is join it, it's free, it doesn't cost anything, and there's lots of resources there, and we'll definitely give you those for free, no charge. Here's the other thing. If you're serious about investing in real estate and you're ready to take action, I have a program. No matter where you're at in your real estate journey, I can help you out. I don't care if you've got five houses, 10 houses, no houses, 100 houses. I've got something that I can share with you that's going to make you a lot of money. And if you want to become financially free and you're brand new to real estate investing, this is the absolute thing you want to do. And here's the thing. What I've learned from most of my students right now is that it's not just an investing program. It's a mindset program. We're going to change the way you think about money. If you want to start investing, make sure you schedule a call with me and my team and let's get the ball rolling. Guess what else? If you are like, man, I don't got the time and I make tons of money. I just enjoy listening to what you're going to say. That's cool too. We actually have set up a fund where you can invest with us, but you got to be an accredited investor. If you want to find out what that looks like, all you got to do is click the link in my bio, fill out the form. It takes you about two seconds and then we'll let you know about the deals that we're doing. We're doing big deals in Kansas City. And this year, I think we'll do two huge deals in Kansas City. I'm looking at a few right now and I want you to be a part of it. And if you've got more money than time, then that's what you should do. If you've got more time than money, then schedule a call with me and my team and we'll get you into our coaching program so that you can have more money than time. Okay, so at your journey right now, you're at a, by the time this podcast, um, lands you'll be at 128 or 122 122 in the resort yeah okay that's awesome so where are you getting all this i know you're meeting people i know you're talking to people i know that's one of the things that you preach about that you're trying to get to know people who are smarter than you always of course what other things are you doing yeah so outside of meeting with the players in the space i, I run a property management company so i own and operate that getting to be less hands-on. I self-managed my first 30 apartments and then founded a PM company out of necessity. Yes. And so that was a whole adventure in its own. Uh, I've got a consulting company and that takes about five hours a week. So that gives a little bit of time to just other people helping them figure out their business because there's so much to learn. And then outside of that, really nothing. Just building the relationships is the forefront of everything I do. I still do some tenant communications. I'm getting out of that, but I'm just making sure that all the projects are going forward, doing a lot of renovation deals, and I, I handle all the money, so the, the bank refinances are all on me. So what are your long-term goals, and what are your short-term goals? Yeah, so right now, short-term, I'm buying a condo for my mom this year, Point Rustin. Yes. So Rustin, for those who don't know, that that was where the arsenic stacks were, and it was supposed to be condemned for like a hundred years. Yeah. They put just enough dirt over it to make it legal, but it's a beautiful location. Right, they totally changed that entire area. It's ridiculous. Some of the land was selling for 3 million bucks. Now the condos are 3 million bucks, but. So that's kind of the kind of condo you're buying her. The one that I'm looking at, it's about a million five, but that's waterfront. The, the $3 million condos are the penthouse and she doesn't need or want that. It's, well, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just I might that. want one, but. Yeah, no, I've been through that whole area. Uh, they got a movie theater down there. They've got everything. They've got like a sculpture. It's, yeah. it's completely transformed. It was a creosote plant or something like that at some point in time. And 
Yeah, they threw some dirt on it, made it into condos, yeah. redeveloped the whole area. And it, it's beautiful. But yeah. that's the short-term goal, and I've allocated about 8000 bucks a month to make that happen out of cash flow. So it's going to be 10% down deal, qualifies as a second home. I have to live there for 14 days a year, and she can live there the rest. So working on that right now. And then long-term goals over the next five years is going to pay off the whole portfolio. Keep scaling with non-recourse debt, but paying off everything that I have just to take risk off the table. Right. How proud of your of you is your mom? I, I I mean, I try to make her proud. That's that's my goal. Yeah, I mean, you wanting to get her the condo, what does she do for a living? Yeah, so she used to work at State Farm. Okay. Now she manages the team at Perkins Coie, which is a, a law firm. Okay. But um, yeah, she, she'll be able to retire in the future. Right. But be able to is not necessarily what I want her to have. You want to have a good life. Yeah, she deserves it. Yeah, for sure. That's awesome, man. It always inspires me to hear those stories, like, especially because I'm like, I need to do more, <laughs> you know, just like seeing people go above and beyond. Um, she, she obviously, you know, it's family is the most important thing and you never know, you know, how soon things could just end or something could change and absolutely so we were talking earlier offline that you had like the number one bigger pockets podcast ever yeah on their youtube channel that was their biggest i mean viewed i think the next most viewed was robert kiyosaki and he had just over half of the views that i got why did yours get so many views other than it being something that was palatable I, i keep everything very simple Right. Everything is simplistic and it's never above anybody. And if it is, they can ask the question and I can repeat it in a way that anybody will understand it. However, for every comment that I got, I responded. So everybody in that comment section, I, I'll just put in a response, unless it's one of those spam bots. I don't need to respond to yeah, those. Yeah, block. <laughs> yeah, hit block. But I responded to everybody. That created a lot of engagement, got some back and forth. And that, that also brought some people to my YouTube channel. But the it showed I was human right? And, and other, it's not just like some unattainable person. I tried to be as human as possible because what I did is repeatable. Right. And why did they bring you on the bigger pockets podcast? Like, how did you get on that? Yeah. So that was a fun roundabout story, but I ended up, uh, someone messaged me online. I think it was through Facebook or Instagram and they're asking for help figuring out how to scale their portfolio. And they knew I'd done the seller finance thing. I ended up helping them out. I showed them the simplicity of what I do and how I can scale it from where I'm at to a billion dollars real estate before, well, I mean, billion dollars of equity before I'm 40. Is that the goal? I, I, th- I think we'll crush that, but I just did the math for that back then. And um, they ended up being friends with Brandon Turner. Cool. So they sent a, a message to Brandon and got me on the podcast. Hey, it helps to be nice to people. Absolutely. So let's go down that billion dollar road uh because that is very admirable so how are you going to get there and what what is the why a billion dollars yeah so uh, i'll start off with the how because for people that want to do that the the why will be a little less important for them but right the the how is you just have to figure out how do i borrow a billion dollars the bottleneck in everybody's business outside of systems is getting cash flowing debt. Right. So to get to a billion, my odds of earning that are very low right. from an earned income. There's no debt sure. I can get. And like, maybe I could scale my business, but that's not feasible. That's not real to me yet. No, I, don't, I think a billion dollars is pretty hard to do as a W-2. And I've met people that do a billion a year in revenue, but right. still it's, it's, that's very few people. Right. So I have to figure out how do I buy a billion dollars of real estate leveraged? How do I get the debt? And right. so mastering the creative finance game, I didn't start it. People used to do this all the time, but I perfected it. I understand the little minute details of the seller finance game now. And to get there, I have to find the owners that have mastered their game on the 300 to 500 unit size deals that are looking for an exit that don't want money. And that's most of them. What I've found, the people that own the three to 500 unit deals, there's a point, unless they're syndicators, where they have to exit, but it's too big to 1031. There are people with the 2,000 unit portfolios that can't 1031, I met with them. And they, they can't sell and then buy something new. There's not something for sale big enough. 
Right. So their only exit is to pay it off and then to sell out on a contract. Right. So meeting with them, that's the how. Right. Building those relationships and then becoming the person who gets that contract. Why, why would they? Why would they want to sell it to you versus sell it um, to sell it outright? They don't want the cash, and they don't want to worry about the taxes. The right. amount of taxes that they pay at that level is ludicrous. Right. If and they were just to exit, how much? How much of a reduction in taxes would they get if they sold it at like at a contract to you? Well, it depends. There's a lot of factors because if they 1031 up to that they could realize all their gains from all the past transactions, right. which would be very painful. Right. If they just wrote a check and they bought it, it could be a little different because I don't know their basis. They could have inherited it where the basis steps up again. So there, there's a lot of pieces that I'm missing in that equation. Right. But for a lot of these players, they're not passing it to their kids. And if they want to exit, like their kids don't typically want it. Right. So they don't want to manage an empire because you still have to manage the managers and manage all the systems and the people at, at some level. Right. So that, that's the reason they would exit. Now the why behind a billion dollars is because I, I know I can. Right. And the fact that I can get there, I'll manage it better than the next guy or gal. Like I'll, I'll just do a better job managing the money. We don't own anything, we manage it. So my thought process is I can get there, so I ought to try. Right, so you're, you're, you've got a good start. Um, what do you think your next big move is gonna be? Yeah, I'm stabilizing the resort. I have to, to beef up the balance sheet to get some of the loan products that I'm trying to get. So mm-hmm. I'm in the optimization stage of the business cycle. We, we built the portfolio, we stabilized it. Now we're optimizing for highest and best use and then we're gonna pay it off. And then I'll have this equity position for the balance sheet and I'll go get non-recourse debt and start sniping deals from the syndicators who got variable rate debt. They're gonna start losing all their stuff and I've seen that on hundreds of millions of dollars worth of loans where these big players started making mistakes. Greed will get you every time. Absolutely, it's not worth it. They, they, they didn't think that the interest rates would go up. And you know, it's so funny because everything is so one dimensional when people are talking, they're like, oh, you know, we'll just buy it. We'll raise a bunch of other people's money. We'll put it into a deal and then we'll just refi. And if you, and they're like, and they pick, they're like, pick it worst case scenario. And if rates are up at five and a half, yeah. we'll still be okay. Mm-hmm. But they didn't plan on this. Oh, no. And so that's why you're so smart to not want to have debt. The reason, the only reason that I don't have debt is I saw bad times early on in my career and I bought stuff in Vegas on speculation yeah. and, and I was like, oh man, I'm never doing that again. And now I know that there's going to be bad times. Yeah. The, it is a thing. It's not always sunshine and rainbows. Yeah. So a billion dollars worth of real estate by the time you're 40 years old, I hope you, I hope you crush that. That'd be awesome. Uh, that would put you now, do you see yourself doing the syndication model? No, no. Syndication's a last resort. If I'm ever in jeopardy of losing my stuff, let's say I get to the end of a balloon and I can't refinance. Right. I have a, a decent equity position in the portfolio. I would discount sell the stuff I'm in jeopardy of losing to myself in a new syndication. So if I had to syndicate funds, I could basically 100% cash out whatever equity position I sold at get my cash to get liquid again to save my butt yeah and, and then i'd be selling it at a discount with acquisition debt which is better than the refinance so the investors would be happy but that's the only reason i see that as a tool why do you not like the syndication model i don't like to add steps that's one of my core principles and adding people add steps people yeah. are essential to build the business but i don't want a whole bunch of even if they're limited partners i i just don't want to worry about the what ifs. I'm good losing my money. Yeah, you don't want to lose other people's money. Right. And I, I've never lost anybody's money, you know, knock on wood. But yeah. But I, I make sure to do really conservative deals. But I, I think the story is worth more than the real estate and everybody's syndicating right now. And so the thought is, if I do that, I just become another person who's doing that thing versus someone who plays the game at the highest level and doesn't act as a hammer because when you're a hammer, everything's a nail. Right. Syndicators see everything as an option. They yeah, get, totally. Oh, I can syndicate all these deals. Yeah. Versus, I make a development fee. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You get your fee up front. Yeah. Who and cares s- if we lose money? Oh, well, yeah. <laughs> but my thought process is I'll use that as a tool, but that's not going to be a business model. Same with Burr. People that just Burr and try and leverage to the hilt, that's not a great business model because nah. it only works until it, I mean, it works till it doesn't, right? It works till it doesn't. And then you run out of runway. 
Have you ever um, have you ever looked into uh, tax increment financing? No, I have no clue what that is. Cool. I think you'll enjoy this then. So, the the only reason I tell you that you may want to consider looking into syndications and tax and tax increment financing. I didn't hear a lot about it until. So we did some things, some tax, some some historical tax credits in New Orleans back in the day because you could do them on pretty much any property where you get the five years federal and the and the state credits, which basically means that you're getting 45% of the rehab money and a credit back to you. So let's say you bought a property for $5 million and let's say you spent $5 million in the rehab. You're going to get 2.5 of that million dollars-ish. Yeah. I'm not doing exactly the math, but ish of uh, money back that you can sell or you can use as your financing. Wow. It's Yeah. So in the Midwest, they have the same thing. So it's something that a tool that we're using because what you do is I know you like creative financing. Oh, yeah. So, so that's why I'm telling you about it. So what you could do is with this tax increment financing, you basically you figure out what you're what you're cost is going to be, you know, like this building that I bought. Okay. The building that I bought for 96,000 square foot, Mm -hmm. we, it's on the historical registry. So we can apply for state and local federal uh, tax credits. Those are at, we get 45 cents on the dollar. So it means even if we put $10 million in it, we can sell that to a bank and we can get 90% of that money back of the 45 cents. So out of the 45 cents of that money, like, let's say it's, just I'll just use it as 50%. It's easier for me to do the math. But let's say it's a $10 million budget. We sell $5 million to a bank or the bank gives us the financing because we have that and they know we can sell that. That That's the historical tax credit model, which is alive and well in the Midwest and in other cities like that. Because what is happening to the properties in Tacoma might even, I don't know. I haven't looked at historical tax credits in Tacoma, yeah. but... When you're in these older cities, a lot of these old office buildings are get, being converted into multifamily. And so the way they're doing that is through historical tax credits. And it's really, really cool. And I think because you're a creative finance guy, you would love it. So the credit's the asset that you can borrow against. Yeah. So the the credit is you going and actually getting the state to say, yes, we'll, we'll allow you to do this. And the only thing that cannot change is the exterior of the building. The interior of the building can do, be whatever it is. Yeah, so basically you're going in there, and I just did a podcast with a guy who's going to be my partner on something that we're looking to do, and he's he's done like 40 buildings this same way. I've done it with I've done it with another uh, partner of mine in uh, New Orleans where we did just houses that way. So, and I've done it with yeah houses, and you're getting the credits, and it's it 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 makes your ROI go through the freaking roof. Yeah, that's that's ridiculous. Yeah, but most people on the West Coast don't know about it. I didn't know about it. I never heard about it. Yeah, I know you'll be digging it up tonight. I'll, I'll take a look. That's for sure. You should definitely take, take a look at and see if they even have them in Washington. Because a lot of times it's not even on the radar for most people. But uh, yeah, it's something I'm for sure going to do in the Midwest uh, with my building and with other buildings. And we're looking to do that uh, for the future. I mean, this is all the guys do in the Midwest. So what's next on the horizon for you? You know, I'm in a cross between how much time and energy well first of all i need to get my coaching programs scalable so that it requires less of my time and the social media requires none of my time so where are you at on that process so i have been through like three different coaches to get me there and i believe i found another guy who is going to because it's a whole new world like real estate right it's a whole new world and so it needs to be more automated and more module driven and less me driven, right? Yeah. So that I can, cause my true passion is just like yours. It's chasing real estate deals and buying properties. Yeah. And so I'm transitioning that no matter if it makes me less money or than it is making me right now, I'm transitioning that to be less me and bring, bringing on junior coaches. So I have a couple junior coaches and you, and then I'm hiring a new assistant. I lost my assistant of 13 years, uh, two years ago. And I have not replaced somebody since. That's and that, tough. Yeah, that ki- that killed me. So for the last two years, I've really been in the weeds in business until I found guys like Danny over here. Like right. I've, been, I've been in the weeds in my business. So I feel like we're just turning the corner. We've got a couple great interviews. And um, I believe in the next probably three months, we'll, we'll have all of our SOPs. Christina Aguilera, who you met today, is helping yeah. us with that stuff. And 
there's a lot of transitioning. We're getting out of the business and putting the processes in place so that I can kind of spend more time. And is that all a live product or is that a built that evergreen structure where it's recorded, people log in? Her product? Uh, your product. Oh, yeah. So right now it's there. It's live. Okay. And it has modules. So we'll build more modules and then there'll be uh, less online coaching because what I'm finding is that most people that enroll in our program have got one or two deals mm -hmm. under their belt or none. Yeah. And so really they don't need my help. They need one of my junior coaches to help. Right. And that is fine. We could do that. And then we'll scale up for the people who need my help, which is going to be a higher price product. Absolutely. And so, you know, you figure that out over time and you're like, okay, I'm explaining what earnest money is. I'm explaining what this is. And yeah, this is probably not a good use of my time, you know, and I do like to help people. That's why I got into it. But to scale, we need to uh, get it to the next level. Have you considered this is something that we did for our, our business is, is record the base knowledge. And then so you have information in one bucket that people can watch anytime a day. Yeah. And then you have the actual application, which is, hey, you went through these 20 recorded videos for due diligence, underwriting, real estate analytics, or whatever your focus is. And then the, the junior coaches just work with the people that have seen that so you don't have to explain. What is earnest money? What is a contract? What is That's exactly where we're at. That's exactly what we're building out right now. We started with just a wholesaling flipping course, and yeah. then you realize, oh my God, I gotta do all these other videos on this other stuff because I get, keep getting the same question and it's just not worth the time and energy. It's like, you gotta go through these modules and I gotta break it down. Yeah, that's exactly where we're at. And I have about six weeks to get all that done because then there's a whole nother part of the business, which is that when you go and you start advertising on Facebook and on TikTok, you get a bunch of leads. They come in, they raise their hand and they say, yeah, I'm interested, but then they don't show up. Right. So what you find out, and this is from me going to masterminds and everything and doing this for the last eight months is that the people that you need to coach and that you want to coach need to have high intent. Okay. And how do you, how do you find high intent? You make them jump through hoops, right? If they're just like, yeah, I'm interested, click the button and we're good. That's fine. Or if it's, I'm interested, fill out the application and we're good. It's not that well. So what you work on is called a VSL. Have you heard of the VSL? No. So it's called a video sales letter. So basically when the people would come, to, when they come to our website, they will be, they will be dealing with what is called a VSL, an application with high intent, okay? And then they'll have, we'll put them through a sales funnel. So the sales funnel is gonna be basically a bunch of different steps. So this, those steps will be like, and I have a really great one right now that's already built out, but it took me so long. And here's the thing, it's like, it's the wrong coach. I hired a guy, and the funny thing is he was supposed to speak here and he flaked out. So he, yeah, like I think it was one of those situations where he was like, cause I literally said, I'm done with you, but you can still speak at the event. And then he never came uh, to the event. And so I was, and Denver communicated. It was pretty uh, uh, ridiculous, but he did teach me a lot about the, the um, about the mechanics of stuff, but I needed someone to, to do it for me. I, and so I learned for the last eight months about the online coaching world. Yeah. And I realized that like, wow, I need to just partner with somebody or have somebody build out the funnel, but it's all about these sales funnels, which actually would work really well in real estate in some capacity. But like, there's a whole online, I'm sure you've seen the ads like click here, do this, do this, do the other thing. It's overwhelming. Yeah. But there, there is, there's a funnel process where you really can get we did a little bit of it today with like the automated text messaging and stuff like that, but where you bring it in and people are coming through and they're basically getting in this bucket, in this bucket, in this bucket. So if they're like, if they didn't show up, then they go over here and they kind of get matriculated. Yeah. And it's, it's a whole, it's a whole cool world, but I just don't have the time. And that's not where my heart is. My heart is in developing and building out real estate deals. And that's the other part of it is that you realize once you become coaching people is that, 20% of them are going to do it, maybe less. Probably less. Yeah. I mean, if, if we're talking like real numbers. I was being nice. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I think it's between 10 and 15% of yeah, people was... will actually do it. Yeah. But the other percentage, whether it's 90 or 80, want to be a part of it. Absolutely. They want to be a part. They want to feel like they're on the team. That's why I'm not against syndication. And that's why we are building out at the same point in time, a sales funnel 
to then help people who are interested in investing with us because we know that they're never going to go and actually do it. So why wouldn't we help them be a part of it and get something out of it, right? Yeah, that's huge. Yeah, and so for me, I've realized for years and years and years, people always want to invest with me, but I don't like, like you, I don't want partners. And so I'm like, well, what's a way that I can bring on partnerships where I don't have to deal with anything? And that's through the sales funnel, like where we don't have to ask, answer questions and they can yeah. go read those modules. Like, do you want to know what an LP is? Do you want to know what a private placement memorandum is? Do you want to know all this stuff? Do you agree that you're a accredited investor? And then we go deeper into that. So although, you know, the coaching has been tough and everything like that, you know, even these events, man, I'm like, dude, I'm not doing any more of these. These are freaking a lot of work. You oh, know what I mean? Yeah. I was watching you run this. I was like, wow, I don't want to do that. Yeah. You know, you, you know, I'm, I'm a, tr I'd like to try everything, but of I course. think the next one I'll do will be high level, just like hundred percent people, um, you know, like a high ticket, high invitation. Yeah. And, and, and that'll be a little bit, you know, it'll be exclusive. A hundred percent. Maybe we'll do it in Belize. <laughs> no. We'll do it. We'll probably do it in Kansas City in my building. The next one that we do is, and uh, we'll hopefully have a cool uh, golf setup there and everything like that. But um, if somebody's listening right now, Cody, and they're saying, "Man, Cody's impressing the shit out of me right now," and I want to be like Cody, how do they follow you? Yeah, they can reach out. I've got a YouTube channel. Okay, it's Cody and Christian Multifamily Strategy. We just talk about boiling boiling down everything to its simplest form. We don't like to add steps and there's too many people talking about too many letters on the internet, like IRR and ROI, like the, all these things that don't really matter. Right. We IRR. just, yeah. It's like, that's the alphabet soup. We, yeah. I don't care. Just right. figure out how to buy it, how to never lose it and how to make it fun. But right. we talk about it there. Yeah. It's, it's so, it's so funny that you say that is everything is about confusion. It's about like, Oh, I got to study this whole new vocabulary to understand that. Oh, what's an IRR? bullshit yeah like it's literally investor bs like because if you're talking about an irr to your investor you're not making any money <laughs> right <laughs> right like you're not making any money but it allows people to get financing now if you're if somebody's out there and they're a new investor and they're or they're new and they're listening to your story and you're 23 years old and they're seeing that you're going to have 128 or 22? Yeah, 122 tw units this month. 122 units this month and you started three years ago. Yeah. What advice would you give them? Yeah, so I would pick your market after you've established your goal. And I, I wouldn't say the goal has to be I want to make 10,000 bucks a month. I would revolve the goal around I want to be able to take care of these people, my family, be able to live a good life. I'm into cars, so that's gonna cost this much. I'd establish what you want to do and then put a dollar figure to it. I'm a math guy and I like to run numbers in my head. So the thought process was, okay, the condo for my mom is gonna be eight grand a month. And if I need 12 to live and take care of my sister as well, then it's 20 grand a month. And I like cars, so maybe that's 5,000 bucks a month for the car. So 25,000 bucks a month, 300 grand a year, and then you just figure out, okay, what's my return? If I'm earning 6% in my market, it's, which is probably lower than you're gonna earn in your market, but if I get 6%, I need $5 million of equity. And the quickest way to get there is to just pick one market, meet with all the players who own the type of asset you wanna own, figure out how to buy the 5 million in real estate and then figure out how to pay it off. Right. And that's it. That's awesome. Have you heard of Oscar Hulk Holden? No. He's the largest owner of land in Tacoma. He's passed away. Wow. The largest owner of commercial property in Tacoma, Washington. Oscar Hulk Holden. Yeah, he'd, he'd be somebody you want to look up to see who took over, but he owned more real estate than anybody else in Tacoma, Washington. That's, yeah, that's incredible. Um, are you planning on sticking in Tacoma? So I live in Renton, a little bit north of Tacoma. Oh, I'll, that's where I'll, I grew up. Yeah, I'll probably stay local just because I have family in Washington. I don't know that I'll live there all year round though. The weather, I mean, it's like a toxic relationship in Washington because the three good months make you forget about the bad nine as far as weather goes. Yeah, that's, I think it might be two months. I was being generous. <laughs> We've got to all try and be generous every once in a while. But uh, yeah, the, so it's, it's okay. But I, I'll probably find a warm place to live for part of the year and then visit Tacoma as much as I can for family. 98055 or 98056? 98056. Okay, cool. My mom lives in Renton still to this day. Oh, cool. Yeah, she lives over by the uh, Safeway off of Union and Northeast 5th. Okay. If you know where that is. Familiar. Yeah. 
All right. Well, I appreciate you coming on the show. I appreciate all your information. I appreciate you coming to the event with your business partner. And I hope to see you at golf tonight. Let's make it happen. All right, man. Peace. Are you interested in investing in real estate, but you don't feel like you got the time to take a coaching program? I get it, right? You're busy. You're making money. And that's okay. But you want to invest with me because you're like, Troy, I like what you do. I see what you're doing. You're a real deal. Yes, I am. I'm an average Joe. I worked at Burger King. I worked at Red Rob. And I started investing in real estate. And I started from absolutely nothing. And I will take you along with my journey and you can get all the benefits, but you gotta be an accredited investor. If you wanna invest with me and you wanna be a part of something great and you don't have the time, guess what? We're launching a fund that you can be a part of, but you gotta be an accredited investor. And if you wanna find out more about what that looks like, all you gotta do is click the link and we'll show you exactly what that looks like. And guess what? If you're not an accredited investor, then you may down the road be a credit investor. So definitely learn what that's all about and we'll see you on the next one.